Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of ordering rational numbers. This is standard 6.2D in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 37 of the 2022 released STAR test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So Akeem is creating a list, putting fractions, percentages, and decimals in order. Here we go. Least to greatest. So the problem with his list is that Akeem has got uh, all three of these. We've got fractions, we've got percentages, and decimals. And really, if we can change them all into one form, I always find decimals to be the easiest uh, because percentages and decimals are just very closely related. Fractions only work if they all have the same denominator, which can be a pain. So let's change them all into decimals. If they're all in, de in decimals, then ordering them is super easy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna find, it looks like it's the same six in each set, right? So I've got 0 0.21, already decimal. All right, so I've got my 22%. So how do we change a percent into a decimal. Well, what we do here is we take the decimal point. If it doesn't exist, the decimal point goes always after the ones place. And you're going to think of it as 22 over 100, which is 22 hundredths, which means we need to move the decimal over once, twice. Uh, simply because if we have 100%, right, that equals one whole. So 22% is like 22 out of 100 or 22 hundredths. So you move the decimal over twice to the left to get something that's equivalent. So 22% is the same as 22 hundredths. See, now we can order these. Looks like they're in the correct order. All right, so we've got one fourth. Two different ways to do that. First, that is a benchmark fraction. So in sixth grade, we learn about benchmark fractions. That should be one that we memorize, okay? So if we don't have this one memorized, uh, one fourth, fourths can also be called quarters. Think of quarters, right? And how much they're worth, how many cents they're worth. If that doesn't help you, there's two different ways. You can change it into a fraction who's got a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000. Can't change it into 10, but I can change it into 100. If I multiply top and bottom by 25 to make an equivalent fraction, and that's 25 hundredths, so 0 0.25, because it's worth 25 cents. If you can't turn a fraction into uh, an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000, and I say those three because you've got 10, you've got 100, you've got 1,000, those are the thir first three place value, decimal place value, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. That's why those are very important denominators. If you can't do that, you can always divide up. Every single fraction in the whole universe can be turned into a decimal if you divide up. Divide the denominator into the numerator. It just takes a little bit more time. That's why multiplying by into a denominator of 10, 100, or 1,000, it's nice if you can do it. All right, so that's going to be 1 because you can't divide 4 into 1. That's why you've got the decimal. 4 goes into 10 twice. It's 8. That's over 2. We're just going to keep adding zeros until we're done. And there we go, five times. So anyway, you look at it. Uh, one fourth is the same as 0 0.25. All right, so now I've got 0 0.35 already in there. Uh, 38%, right, it's the same thing. Moved over once, twice. So far, it looks like it's completely in order. Three eighths, okay, three eighths. Well, we could do that same thing. I know that eights can go into 1,000 if I multiply by 125. Eights can always go into 1,000 if you multiply by 125. If you can't remember that, like I said, just divide up. But it's going to be 375 thousandths, so 0 0.375. So that goes to the thousandths. You see that this is completely in order if we just flip these last two. And in order to do that, we are going to need D. 